In this video, I'm gonna dive into 10 old single player games that are still totally worth your time in 2024. Now, just so you know, I'm sticking to games that are at least 5 to 10 years old. I ain't going any further back than that. So, with that in mind, let's start by talking about the first game on this list. Mafia 2. If you're looking for a free-roaming open-world game like the GTA series, Mafia 2 has an open world, stores to shop at or rob, a police system, and many other things you'd expect from that sort of game. But just like the first Mafia, this game is also a lot more structured, and instead of having much in terms of side content, it plays out like a traditional game campaign, with little time for free roaming. But the game's world is still well designed, even if it's mostly pretty window dressing, and it makes the campaign feel more alive than it would if it was just a corridor shooter. Mafia 2 is the kind of game where the police are actually police, and even though they'll probably never catch you they'll still try to ticket you for breaking the speed limit. It's the kind of game that isn't afraid to be a little tedious to give a sense of contrast between a normal life and the Mafia life. There's an early level in the game that has you packing crates into the back of a truck to test your patience, until you give up and leave. The developers do a good job at recreating the time period, the cars, radio, and weapons all handle and sound pretty nice too. The story and gunplay are both pretty well done, and overall if you're a fan of Mafia stories like The Godfather, then Mafia 2 is worth a shot, as long as you don't go in expecting a true open world game. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag AC Black Flag is by far one of the best in the entire series. It may have some minor flaws like the four stealth sections, the tailing missions, and the optional objectives, but those were mostly okay. The story is pretty revolutionary for an AC game, especially with the ship combat that is phenomenal. You get to experience the life of a pirate and can have a first-person view for the first time. The collectibles are a fun distraction and the 100 challenges were, well, challenging. There are also amazing ship upgrades that make you feel like you're in charge of a large-scale crew that was sailing the seven seas. The combat is simple but immersive, and the weapons are fun to use to your own advantage. The main character that you play is also the best assassin since he is so relatable and has his own struggles outside of the Crete. In the end, this game is the best AC game, and probably even one of the best Ubisoft game. Sleeping Dogs if you look at this superficially, you are going to say it's a badly made GTA clone. Take a second to look beneath the surface and you will understand it's so much more. This game has a great story, character development, you start to develop relationships with your crew members, leading to some tense and interesting and some serious guilt-tripping moments. The gameplay is fun as hell. The combat system is a slightly modified version of the Arkham formula, allowing for more flexibility during combat. Yes, if you want to just get combat out of the way, you can pummel the keys and get through most fights. But if you really want to look stylish, you can pull off some great moves. One very important thing about this game most people won't tell you, you can grab a person and slam them headfirst into an aquarium, causing the whole aquarium to break and the fish to spill out. You can then grab a fish and beat people with fish that just came out of the broken aquarium. Oh, and there's this one moment where you toss a gangster into an ice chipper that just shows how awesome Sleeping Dogs really is, right? If you are coming into this game for the gunplay, don't. Guns are a side thing. Real meat of this game is the hand-to-hand -hand melee combat. Get it on sale or for full price. Either way, this game is worth experiencing. Watch Dogs 1. I think most of the people who dislike this game are those who were disappointed about how the marketing didn't match the final product, but I went into it blind, and it's easily one of the better games I've played. There's just something about it that makes it so good in my opinion. The second one couldn't top it though, and definitely not Legion. If you like watching crime movies or shows, you will love Watch Dog 1's story. Mob bosses, gangs, assassins, hackers, guns, as well as the main character and his family. It's a somewhat generic revenge tale, but the execution is perfect. Extremely varied mission design and realistic plot, not contrived at all. The gameplay is actually simple, but that is its strength. Drive, shoot, sneak, or hack. Playing this in 2024 and the world seems more real than ever with the implementation of facial scanning and cameras on every corner. Very dystopian but close to home more and more in current years. Vibes are 10 out of 10 on a rainy night in Chicago being the vigilante. Every person having a conversation on the street is actually speaking and you can listen to them. Crimes are occurring down random back alleys that you can stop and stuff like that. All in all I couldn't recommend enough as a solid single player story driven experience. <laughs> Quantum Break. Terribly underrated, and even a little too hated from what I've seen. It's not perfect, but none of the game's flaws are real deal breakers. It is a very great time travel story with cool set pieces wrapped in a pretty solid third-person shooter. It also has a whole live-action miniseries in it that changes based on your game choices, which kinda kills the pacing, but it's neat to watch. 
I have always really liked Remedy games, but somehow Quantum Break is special, very appealing for me in particular. While I think it's not as perfect as Alan Wake, but Quantum Break's story of time travel feels great, and it mixes a potentially good story with a very massive technical aspect. Game is visually impressive and I can't really express how much I like it and how impressive it is at moments. The whole time fracture theme with the time waves, and the physical representation of fractured light, makes Quantum Break one of the most beautiful games I have ever seen. The gameplay is very enjoyable too, with the awesome powers, quick movements, dynamic covers, and while the gunplay is not the best, the whole power system makes it very fun to play. Some combats can be really spectacular. In general I can safely say that I absolutely recommend playing Quantum Break. A Rockstar classic, El Noir. This is a detective story where you need to search for clues, interrogate suspects, victims, and witnesses, and decide if what telling you is the truth, doubtful, or a lie. If you choose that it is a lie, you need to use the clues that you found to confront them with the truth. You do this for 21 cases spread across a variety of police investigations. You do traffic, homicide, arson, and more types of cases. There is an overarching storyline that does follow these cases, though not always directly connected but the game offers a compelling story. The era is set in the late 40s post-World War II. You are Cole Phelps, a veteran who has come home and joined the LAPD. The game is an open world, very similar to GTA with a beautifully rendered Los Angeles of that era. There are a variety of cars for you to drive as well as trucks. You can follow the main storyline or drive around searching for film reels, badges, street crimes, and collecting every single car available in the game. One of the things that stands out in this game is the characters' faces. The technology used for this game is unique where actual actors' faces were used for great facial animation. This facial animation technology was used to help you decide if someone is lying, telling the truth, or just not wanting to answer. You can see this in their expression, the way their eyes look away when they tell a lie, or the face not matching the words that they are saying. It's actually a pretty cool technology. It doesn't look great by today's standards of graphics, but the facial expressions seem more advanced than what you see typically even today since they put so much effort in showing how characters react to questions. If you haven't played this game yet, I would definitely pick it up as it's a classic in the list of games that Rockstar has created. I brought a radio from there. That's all. Spec Ops The Line Playing this game is rather like watching the proverbial train wreck. You'll be horrified, but you can't look away. This is in no way a bad thing. Spec Ops wants to tell a story about soldiers in war. But unlike games such as Call of Duty, it doesn't want you to feel like an awesome, unstoppable killing machine. It wants you to see that war is not glamorous, awesome, fun, or desirable. It wants you to see the terrible toll that combat can exact on those who experience it. And above all, it wants you to see that in real conflict, there are no good guys and bad guys. And the world is full of gray areas. War is hell and anyone who goes in will either join the fortunate dead, or have to live with what they've done to survive. Spec Ops is a third-person cover-based shooter that alternates between desert environments and crumbling urban ruin. You have two squadmates who can be directed to attack specific targets or heal a fallen comrade. They're pretty good at following orders in a timely fashion and, unlike some other AI partners, they're not highly prone to getting themselves shot constantly or hung up on the level geometry. Enemies are decently clever, more than willing to flank you, toss grenades to get you out of cover, or trick you into walking right into a heavy trooper's line of fire. I highly recommend this game. However, the real problem is, this game has been delisted on Steam Store or pretty much everywhere and is pretty hard to get. Titanfall 2 Titanfall 2 has the best story I've ever experienced from an FPS. The relationship between the player's character and his Titan is one that's fun to witness, made sweeter with occasional dialogue choices that really amplify their personalities. The overall arc is short, but doesn't feel like it as the delivery of the story is perfect. The villains don't have a whole lot of depth, but they're not super important individually in the overall narrative and fit their purpose well. There are some allied side characters as well, but again their background and personality aren't integrated into the main story really. There's two types of combat in the game, on foot and piloting your Titan. You'll spend most of your time on foot, and that's the more fun part. But the Titan combat is also fun in its own right with the different loadouts you can switch between on the fly. The on-foot gameplay is extremely fast-paced and fluid. You never have to stop in all the different movement mechanics of wall running or sliding. They are extremely easy to implement as you're playing both in and out of combat. If you're into fast-paced movement in games or snappy shooters, you'll love Titanfall 2. Dying Light 
Dying Light is a zombie game that focuses on atmosphere and player movement. If you have played Dead Island, you already know the basic mechanics, craft melee weapons and bash zombies while collecting supplies. But Dying Light employs numerous changes that improve on this. Atmosphere is perhaps its best asset. The day-night cycle is a crucial component as there are major changes to mood and gameplay as the sun sets behind the horizon. At night, the tension elevates as you experience reduced visibility and face zombies that are nimble, fast, and deadly. You will be tempted to venture out at night for extra rewards. During the day, you battle hordes of shambling zombies that are fun to eviscerate with a broad selection of weaponry. The difference between night and day provides a genuine roller coaster ride. Parkour movement makes navigating the world immensely enjoyable. You are able to run, jump, and climb over buildings with ease. You just look at a ledge and hold the jump button to climb. The single player is surprisingly entertaining and lengthy, with side quests that are often better than those in the story. Characters are well-defined and memorable, with more effort given to justify the game world. You run between areas, clear safe zones, rescue people, and collect items. Story missions might even feature shootouts and indoor levels. Overall, Dying Light is a terrific zombie game that greatly improves the core mechanics from Dead Island. It emphasizes the world and how you move around in it. The changes between day and night are refreshing and memorable. There is a healthy amount of content that will provide dozens of hours of entertainment in solo or cooperative play. Beyond Two Souls Beyond Two Souls deserves an honorable mention on this list. Not for the gameplay but for a story game as a whole, going forward from that to games like Until Dawn, you can really see how developers leaned into narrative-driven games that sure were lacking in gameplay elements, but leave you satisfied with a good story and multiple endings to replay and see how your choices affect the story. If you love games like Fahrenheit, Detroit Become Human or Heavy Rain, then 100% you will like this game too. Absolutely recommend it. Well everyone, that was all for this video. Make sure you subscribe as I am closing in to reaching 2,000 subscribers on this channel. See ya. Jody, what have you done? Tell them to leave me the f alone, because next time, I'll kill everyone.